Shaolin monks are known all around the world for their incredible mental and physical prowess. These incredible monks can perform impossible feats that make them seem like superhumans. Aside from their amazing abilities, the Shaolin have established a worldwide reputation as monk warriors. Their history dates back about 1500 years, and to this day, many continue to train to become Shaolin fighters. Thanks to Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, this intense form of Chinese martial arts easily spread worldwide. You may already know a lot about Shaolin Kung Fu and the Shaolin monks thanks to pop culture, but I'm sure there are still some things you don't know about them. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most fascinating facts about Shaolin monks. From a monk climbing a hill barefoot to the legendary Shaolin werewolf, here are 15 things you don't know about Shaolin monks. Number 15. Monk Climbs Hill Barefoot Martial art enthusiasts are already familiar with the amazing power of Shaolin monks, but those who initially haven't heard of them will be quite surprised after seeing their skills. This hiker was pretty floored when he looked beside him and saw a monk walking uphill barefoot. While the man was struggling even with the proper gear and a rope, the monk reached the top as if it were nothing. This just might be due to the different levels of experience between the two hikers. But even experienced hikers wouldn't be able to climb a mountain barefoot, without equipment, and with sheer ease just like this monk. Our skin gives us a lot of traction, but what the monk did would be incredibly hard and painful for ordinary people to accomplish. If you're impressed already, buckle up because this is just one of the many things that make Shaolin monks seem superhuman. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14. Breaking Rocks with Bare Hands Breaking bricks or rocks with bare hands is a stunt that's popular across the world, but no one else does it like the Shaolin monks. Iron palm or iron hand is one of the training techniques in numerous types of Chinese martial arts. This technique involves training your body, with the main focus on your hands. Shaolin monks train daily to strengthen their hands, from their skin to their muscles and down to their bones. After strengthening their hands from wrist to fingertip, they'll practice how to strike properly and exert the greatest force in a single blow. The final key to the iron palm is to develop the key. This is accomplished by doing breathing exercises and improving their mental focus. Using this technique, Shaolin monks use their bare hands to break hard objects, from coconuts to bricks. It's even said that some of them can hit steel without sustaining any serious injury. Number 13. Monks can change their body temperature with their mind. Mind over matter. Some people believe that one can receive miraculous results by strengthening their mind to use it at full capacity. But how true is this belief? Can the human mind really affect reality? Some monks are said to be capable not only of raising or decreasing the temperature of their body at will, but they're also capable of slowing their metabolism. These monks are capable of withstanding ice-cold temperatures as low as 40 degrees Fahrenheit. As if that's not enough, when training, they're also draped with wet sheets of fabric, reducing their body temperature even more. An ordinary person wouldn't be able to withstand this freezing temperature and might even die. But monks don't seem to mind the cold. There are even some cases where people claim they've seen steam coming from the wet fabrics draped on the monks, signifying that they really raise their body temperatures. What's more, several researchers, including those from Harvard, confirm that these monks have the ability to raise their body temperature enough to feel as if they have a light fever. On the other end of the spectrum, some monks can sit in a pot of hot water over an open flame and not get burned. This is believed to be impossible, and that's why even medical experts all around the world are amazed by Shaolin monks. By training their minds and using mental techniques, monks can control the internal processes of their bodies. They can decrease their blood pressure and stabilize their breathing, as well as their heart rate. In fact, some experts think we could achieve great things if all of us started to train our mind just like these monks. Number 12. Iron Neck The nervous system is one that controls our body. This includes the nerves, the brain, and the spinal cord. For this reason, our spinal column and the neck region are two of the most vulnerable regions of our body. One blow in this region can easily end someone's life. That's how you know the Shaolin monks train their bodies to the fullest. They have such incredibly strong bodies that even what's supposed to be one of the weakest parts of their body is powerful. This monk is capable of easily bending a steel bar using his neck. You can see that the volunteer holding the steel bar was incredibly surprised by this feat. And if that's not enough, the monk wrapped the steel bar around his neck as if it were nothing. 
The monk was so incredibly strong that he could even easily drag the volunteer towards him. A second volunteer was needed to help hold the steel bar so that the monk could finish wrapping it around his neck. Even after the incredibly dangerous stunt, the monk acted as if it was nothing. Number 11. Monk Drills His Own Head A single head injury can lead to serious problems, including death. It's one of the most vulnerable and critical spots on a person, and any injury to the head shouldn't be taken lightly. Shaolin monks are different. Many of them have already perfected the iron head technique. Many of them can drive an electric drill into the side of their head without getting injured. The drill doesn't even break their skin. To do this, Shaolin students wrap their heads with layers of silk and start hitting their heads against a wall several times a day. They start doing it gently at first, and they will increase its intensity as time passes by. This daily training will strengthen and harden not only their skin and muscles, but also their bones. After a year of this training, they will decrease the layer of fabric wrapped around their heads, and they will continue to remove every layer every 100 days until all the layers are gone. After that, they will bang their heads against stone walls and sometimes against each other to further strengthen it. The iron head is one of the oldest techniques of the Shaolin, and many monks show off this technique by using their bare heads to break planks, bricks, or bend steel bars. Number 10. Finger Punching one of the secrets behind the Shaolin monk's superpower-like abilities is self-discipline. These people didn't magically gain the skills they have. They do rigorous training each day, and they follow a strict lifestyle to maintain their skills and uphold their beliefs. One of the most incredible things that Shaolin monks can do is finger punching. Young students start to poke trees and wood planks every day to gradually strengthen their fingers. Just like their ordinary training techniques, they will do it gently and increase its intensity gradually. In time, their fingers will be incredibly strong. The holes in this ancient tree in the Shaolin Monastery in China are all created by past students who've trained their fingers. Just imagine how many times the past Shaolin student drove their fingers into this trunk to create these dents and holes. This tree is one of the perfect symbolisms of the Shaolin monk's discipline and power. Number 9. Breaking Glass with a Needle Theoretically, it's possible for a needle to break glass but that requires launching it with incredible speed and power. This is something that isn't possible for ordinary humans to do. But Shaolin monk Feng Fei already perfected his technique of using a needle to break even some of the hardest glass. After proper meditation, this Shaolin master will use a single piece of a needle to break the 3 mm thick glass pane and pop the balloon taped on the other side. His strength and power isn't the only thing that's incredible, but his precision as well. Upon closer inspection, you can see that he didn't break the entire piece of glass, and the needle created a perfect hole that's just big enough to pierce the balloon on the other side. Using his key, this Shaolin monk fired the needle with enough strength and precision. In fact, this feat is so incredible that even scientists are amazed by it. However, it can still be scientifically explained. Glass is a material that's hard to break using such a thin and small projectile thrown by a person. However, with the right power and firmness, the glass could easily break. All it takes is for the needle to make a single crack for it to pass through the glass. If you think that this skill is easy to master, think again. According to Shaolin monks, it takes them about a decade just to master this impressive skill. I guess if you're willing to practice for an entire decade, even you would be able to do this stunt. Number 8. The Iron Crotch Did you know that Shaolin monks have balls of steel? And I mean that literally. This is the way of the Iron Crotch and it might be uncomfortable for some to witness it. It might sound silly, but this isn't just your typical technique. If the head and the neck are both among the most vulnerable spots on our body, there's no doubt that one of the most sensitive ones is the crotch. And yet, Shaolin monks fearlessly and purposefully deal heavy blows to their sensitive areas without any protection. This painful-looking tradition has been practiced by monks for hundreds of years, and it continues to be passed on from generation to generation. The story goes that the iron crotch technique originated in the valley of Juntun, outside the ancient Chinese capital of Luoyang. Aside from getting hit by logs, they also let themselves get kicked in their privates repeatedly. Many of the masters living in China want this technique to live on, but unfortunately the number of students who want to participate in this painful technique is decreasing each year. There is a huge chance that in the next few years, no one will continue to practice this technique. Number 7 diamond fingers. Also known as Buddha's finger, 
This diamond finger is an incredibly hard method that involves strengthening the index finger. Aside from finger punching, those who have successfully mastered this technique are able to pull out rusted nails, destroy small stones, and even crush their opponent's vital organs with just a single blow using their finger. However, one of the most impressive things that Shaolin monks do is the diamond finger headstand. In an impressive show of their strength, they use their two fingers to support their entire bodies and do a headstand. Not only does this technique require physical training, but it also requires the monks to be in a deep state of meditation to successfully keep their balance. The diamond finger stand still remains to be one of the most difficult and impressive skills in Shaolin. Breaking your finger, or even a tiny injury, is incredibly painful. Normal people wouldn't be able to balance or carry something as light as six pounds using a single finger. And yet, some Shaolin masters out there can support more than a hundred pounds of weight without sustaining an injury. Number 6. Monkey Stick If you like watching kung fu movies, you've most likely already seen these techniques and movements before. This is Hao Gun, or the Monkey Staff. This stick or staff is one of the most traditional and legendary weapons used by Shaolin monks. By imitating the movement of the monkeys, the monks can showcase their strength and agility using this technique. Aside from delivering strong blows to their opponents, they can also use the staff to balance themselves and keep their feet off of the ground. It involves several techniques. First is the drunken monkey, which focuses on striking the opponent's throat, eyes, and crotch. Just as the name suggests, this technique involves drunk-like movements. The false steps and sloppy movements are surprisingly effective to throw off enemies. But perhaps the most popular one is the standing monkey, or the tall monkey. Monks will perfectly balance their staff on the ground at the perfect angle and balance themselves on the staff. The monkey-like movement combined with other martial art techniques forms a unique style of fighting that fascinates many people to this day. In fact, the monkey staff is featured in many kung fu movies. Number 5. Monks vs. Japanese Pirates Perhaps one of the most epic battles in the history of Shaolin monks is the fight that happened in the mid-16th century in China. Most of the time, monks try to live peacefully. They practice discipline and simplicity, but the Shaolin monks are also warriors who are ready to fight if needed. In 1550, the monks of the Shaolin Temple in China already made their name throughout the region for their strength and their highly effective form of Kung Fu. The 16th century was a difficult time for China, especially for its coastal towns that were constantly ravaged by Japanese pirates and buccaneers. The Chinese Imperial Army and Navy troops tried their best to stop the pirates from destroying and looting the coastal towns but they couldn't do much. The only hope they had at the time was to deploy the Shaolin monks and hope that they would be successful in driving away their foes. In 1553, the first battle between the monks and the pirates took place on Mount Zhe. For once, the monastic fighters won the battle for their country. However, it wasn't long until the second battle began. Once again, the monks won their second battle, known as the Battle of Wang Jiagang, which happened on the Huangpu River Delta in 1553. Both parties had an equal number of fighters, and yet the story goes that the monks won by a landslide and easily slayed all of their opponents, with only four casualties on their end. The Shaolin monks managed to restore some peace on the once lawless coast of China. The Shaolin monks participated in the battle for the fourth and last time, but unfortunately due to the incompetent leadership of the army general in charge, the battle ended in a terrible defeat. After that, Shaolin monks withdrew as parliamentary forces for the emperor and decided to live on their own. At the time, the Japanese pirates had swords, while the monks used spears and single-edged sabers to fight. The victory of the Shaolin monks perfectly shows that their techniques are lethal. Number 4. 75 Years in Deep Meditation How far can belief, discipline, and devotion take you? For this monk, his beliefs let him live on and meditate for more than 75 years. Dashi Dorjo Itigelov was a Buddhist born on May 13, 1852. He was only 15 years old when he joined a monastery and decided to dedicate his life to Buddhism. Dashi lived a humble life. He tried to give what he could, even as a poor boy. He raised money to provide food and medical care to World War I soldiers, despite being in a difficult situation himself. At the age of 75, Dashi asked his fellow monks to begin funeral rites for him, despite the fact that he was still alive. His peers initially refused to do so, but after his insistence, they finally gave in. Dashi meditated along with other monks, and it wasn't long until he took his final breath. 
His companions followed his dying wish and let Dashi remain in a lotus position and stored him inside a pine box. Dashi's body was left alone for years until 1955. It was then that the monks exhumed his body and discovered that his body was amazingly well preserved. After more than two decades, the monks exhumed Dashi's body once again and this time experts decided to analyze the body. It turned out that despite being dead for more than a decade, Dashi's body showed no signs of decay and it resembled the state of a body that only died days ago. Dashi still had his muscles, inner tissues, joints and skin decades after his death, which shouldn't have been possible. There's a chance that the icy water of the temple in Tibet helped preserve his body. However, some monks claim that Dashi isn't really dead. In fact, other monks claim that they had seen Dashi Itagelab Lama's body moving. Could it be that the monk never really died and is just in a deep state of meditation? Well, the lack of vital signs suggests that the monk really is dead, but who knows? Number 3. The founder of Shaolin Kung Fu came from India The Shaolin Monastery and Shaolin Kung Fu are both important parts of Chinese culture. That's why many are surprised to hear that the man behind Shaolin wasn't Chinese. That's right, the man who started Shaolin didn't come from China, but from India. The story goes that around 1500 years ago, a master from northern India named Buddha Bhadra journeyed all the way to China to spread Buddhism. He regained followers and was later on known as Batuo. It didn't take him long to build his reputation and for him to get recognized by the ruling emperor at the time, Xiao Wen. The emperor then gave him a place to stay, which was the Shaolin Temple built in 495 CE in the jungles on Mount Song in China's Henan province. Three decades later, another Indian monk named Bhadadharma traveled to the temple from southern India and established Shaolin Kung Fu. As years passed, Shaolin slowly evolved and it became incorporated with other martial art techniques. However, the Shaolin monks still follow the beliefs established and created by Buddha Bhadra and Bhadadharma to this day. Number 2. Burnt Shaolin Temple One of the least known things about the history of the Shaolin Temple is that it was burnt and destroyed in the past. The Southern Shaolin Monastery on the Southern Temple is one of the cradles of Shaolin Kung Fu. Being the home of Shaolin monks, it's hard to believe that it would be destroyed. But in 1928, even the powerful and reputable monks couldn't do anything when the temple was set on fire. After the fall of the Qing Dynasty, the rival warlords with their powerful guns and cannons set the temple on fire and also persecuted several of the monks. Only those who managed to defend themselves escaped. In the end, many of the Shaolin scriptures and temples were destroyed. Those who escaped also couldn't do anything because the rulers declared that practicing Shaolin would be punishable by death. Many of them migrated to other countries and decided to live there peacefully, while some of the monks reverted solely to Buddhism. Fortunately, Shaolin has survived to this day, and its followers preserved it even after many tumultuous times over the past 300 years. Number 1. The Legendary Shaolin Werewolf in 1849, Su Kong Tai Jin was born in China. This man became known as the legendary Shaolin Werewolf. Tai Jin was born different from others. He was born with a condition known as hypertrichosis, which led to him to have a lot of hair. His parents were two farmers who knew nothing about the condition. Understandably, the couple was concerned as to why their newborn came out of the womb covered with hair from head to toe. Unfortunately, Tai Jin's condition led them to believe he wasn't their child, but a demonic spirit. Instead of taking care of him, he was left behind by his own parents in the woods. Coincidentally, Tai Jin was found by a group of traveling Shaolin monks before anything could harm the newborn. This was the beginning of Tai Jin's Shaolin journey. The monks were the ones who gave him his name, and he was taken care of by the monks who hoped that a nice family would adopt the young child. However, hypertrichosis, also known as werewolf syndrome, wasn't really known by people at the time. It wasn't surprising that no family wanted to adopt Tai Jin as their kid. After being ostracized, Tai Jin dedicated most of his time to training his body and mind. He mastered many techniques, including the Iron Fist and other techniques in martial arts. He may have been seen as a monster by people outside the temple, but the monks quickly recognized his exceptional ability. He absorbed everything that was taught to him by the Shaolin masters. In his life, he managed to master over 200 different hand-fighting techniques and over 140 weapon systems. After several years of rigorous training, he was hailed as the first Grand Master of Shaolin Do. Tai Jin was also the very first person to master all of the skills of the seven Shaolin temples. After being abandoned by his own parents and being ostracized for most of his life, 
Tai Jin became one of the grand masters of Shaolin. He spent most of his life teaching the ways of Shaolin until his death in 1928. Tai Jin's story is so incredible that people often think it's nothing but a hoax. But what do you think? Tai Jin's story has been passed down from generation to generation, so it's not surprising that there might be some inaccuracies in the version that we hear today. But many people testify that the most legendary Shaolin warrior was Tai Jin, or the werewolf. Did any of these fascinating Shaolin facts surprise you? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you know any other Shaolin facts, feel free to share them as well. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.